Hello YouTube, here is another episode from the history of UFO observations and encounters in the former Soviet Union. I think it's important to understand how they looked at UFOs and USOs in the USSR, especially in light of the recent hype about uh, <clears throat> unusual unidentified flying objects in the year of 2023. So let's go back to the year of 1988. Location, district of the village of Karakert, Armavir region, Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic. Description, it was the separate 36th Raider Company of radio engineering troops of the USSR in interaction with anti-aircraft missile troops and fighter aircraft. Reported by serviceman Sergeant Alexander Kavtun, and this was not reported officially. He revealed this information in an interview with Novosti Ufology representatives years later. During his service in 1988 for three months in the Armenian highlands in the Lesser Caucasus, Sergeant Kavtun was the operator of a radar station in the place of military significance called Bestratok. Alexander's tasks included the control of overflights of aviation and the notification of the Air Defense Command. At the beginning of the summer of 1988, at about 1800 hours, Alexander, preparing for dinner, learned from a colleague that a glow from an unidentified object was observed, observed from a visual observation point, uh, which is observed over the neighboring territory of Turkey. Alexander climbed the visual observation point area uh, and looked into the artillery Busol PUB-2 binoculars, which is used by the military to determine magnetic azimuths and directional angles, orient guns and instruments in a given direction, measure distance, detect targets, as well as for surveillance and reconnaissance. Visually, a flickering glow brighter then the stellar magnitude of whitish color was observed with a smooth and periodic change in the colors of the rainbow. The light source was located at an altitude of about 300 to 500 meters above the Turkish mountains and smoothly shifted horizontally uh, by reverse, left to right. Observation with binoculars clarified little and it was decided to turn on the meter range station, which could detect flying targets larger than one meter with the area covering 360 kilometers. On the screen of the P-18 antenna circular view indicator, no targets appeared, although the photo controller was turned on to prove the fixation of flying objects. An unidentified light source was visually fixed for about 10 minutes and um, then went out on the spot. Usually the antenna was turned on according to schedule or an alarm when reconnaissance balloons could be seen that were shot down by the anti-aircraft missile troops and fighter aircraft. When a terrestrial object was fixed on the radar and flew over the mountain, the Malahit interrogator system was used for reinsurance, and it was located on the tops of the mountains to determine the profile of the aircraft. On large terrestrial aircraft, friend foe devices were installed for identification, the codes on which were changed every two days. On each side of the borders of neighboring states, 20 kilometers of the zone of undesirability was designated to the flights of neighboring nations' aviation, since when flying into these zones, 
without violating the borders. The aviation was automatically taken inside, was targeted during the Cold War between the superpowers. The total number of observers of the unidentified luminous object was six people. Since it was not possible to record any radar evidence, it was decided not to inform the major about what was being observed because of possible negative suspicions about the adequacy of military personnel. Meaning those six servicemen did not want to be labeled as mentally unstable just because they observed a UFO. How different is it from other nations' armed forces? The top brass either ignores reports of UFOs and USOs for decades, punishes those who dare to report their observations, labeling them as unstable, whether in Russian or English. I think the Chinese are definitely smarter than that. Or when the evidence becomes overwhelming, starts feverishly shooting down marketing balloons or allocate tremendous funds for dubious UAP research entities. But at the very top, in every major power of the world, they never cease watching and studying UFOs and USOs. But this information is shared among very few people, so we can only guess as to what they know. I wanted to bring you this report. It was translated from the Russian military terminology, but I wanted to show you how observations were made, and you can see quite a lot in my other videos about Soviet Army and Navy's observations of UFOs and USOs. And I'll continue to bring such reports to the attention of people who watch my videos. And if you can support my research, you will find how to do it in the description to this video. Please like it. Please subscribe to my channel. Please tell others. The most interesting phenomena is being unraveled before your own eyes, but I am just not sure how much of information will actually be shared with the world's population. So it's up to people like me to bring you interesting reports. Thank you.